Hi, I'm Mike Williamson. Today we'll be looking at a brand new artifact with Axiom 3.7, Wicker database decryption on iOS using the iOS keychain. This is most commonly available through the gray key extraction process. I'll be demonstrating two different options for obtaining the keychain value needed to decrypt Wicker. The first way is to use Axiom, and uh, so we'll begin with that option. Uh, so I will create a new case uh, fill in some test values. And from the evidence sources screen, I'll choose mobile and iOS, load evidence, and files and folders. From here, I'll select file browser, and I'll load in the keychain.plist file, which was downloaded alongside the file zip from GrayKey, and select open. I'll type in iOS keychain for my evidence number. And now I can skip ahead to the mobile artifacts view. Uh, to save time, I'm going to clear all of my artifacts. I'm really only interested in the Apple keychain. So I'll select that artifact, and now I can begin analyzing evidence. So this won't take very long. Uh, in the background, Axiom is performing base64 decoding. Um, later in the video, I'll be showing you how to find this value manually, uh, if you'd prefer to do it that way. Either way, um, our Wicker artifact is happy to accept either form, so um, you aren't committed to one option over the other, whatever is more convenient. Uh, so from here, I'm going to switch over to Artifacts view, and under Operating System, you'll see um, potentially some different stuff in here, but Generic Passwords is the one we're after. So I'm going to apply a filter for Wicker. And you'll see that I have three different results that have come up here. Um, the one we're interested in today is the active account value. And um, so I'm just going to grab the value and right click and copy to my clipboard. At this point, if I were doing an actual examination, I'd be making some notes to this effect. Um, but for today's demonstration, I'll simply paste my key into um, Notepad. A quick note on that, uh, if you see uh, in the bottom of the screen here that I've got a 66 character string at this point, um, and because we're dealing with hex values, each group of two actually represents one byte. Um, so ideally what we're looking for is a 32 byte key. So we're a little bit over, and the reason is the leading 00, zero is not part of the key. So I'm going to take that out, and now you can see I have a 64 character string, which means a 32 byte um, uh, key, which is perfect. So I'll copy that to my clipboard. At this point, we can switch back to Axiom. I'll click on the Home button, and the Add New Evidence button will launch process for me again. This is beneficial because it'll add um, the results to my existing MFDB file. However, if you wanted to, you could certainly run them as separate projects if you like. Okay, so uh, under evidence sources, we're going to now add our gray key zip. So I'm gonna go to load evidence, image, and we'll select our files full.zip. This is from Chris Vance's phone. Thanks for that, Chris. And so now we can move to the mobile artifact screen again. Uh, once again, we're going to clear off all of our artifacts and we'll target Wicker in this case. So you can click the checkbox here. And when you click on options, uh, you'll see a brief description of what the process is, as well as a link to our uh, help documentation, um, which essentially recaps the process that we're covering in the video today. Uh, since I already have the key that I need on my clipboard, I'll just paste it in here and click OK. And now I am good to start analyzing my evidence. So while this is processing, I'm going to um, walk you through the other option for obtaining this key. So um, if I was to open my keychain.plist in Notepad++, you'll see that uh, it's XML with a lot of base64 encoded values, the giveaway being the equal sign at the end of a lot of these strings. Um, so on the help documentation that I mentioned in the previous step, uh, you'll actually find this string right here. 
uh, this is the one we want to search for. And what this decodes to is active account, which if you recall from step one is the key that we were looking for. So it's the same thing. It's just in its non-decoded form here. So once I've found that result, which you can see is quite a ways into my file, if I scroll down, eventually I'm going to come across a node called vData. So the data that immediately follows vData is my encryption key. Unlike with the other one, this one does not need to be uh, modified at all. You can just leave it as is. And so you are free to copy and paste this value into our Wicker Artifact Options dialog, and it will take care of the rest. So I'm going to flip back now to Axiom Process, and um, we'll fast forward the video, and I'll touch base with you as soon as processing has completed. All right, so process has finished. Um, so I'm going to switch back to examine now and examine has picked up that additional processing has happened. So when I click on OK, you'll see that uh, after reloading that we now have our two separate evidence sources, including some chat artifacts suggesting that our Wicker decryption was successful. Um, so I'll click on that and you'll immediately see that we have some Wicker data in here. Um, our Wicker artifact supports uh, encrypted attachment decoding as well. Um, so I'll just switch to conversation view here. And you can see our nice threaded chat view containing all of our illicit information. That concludes our tutorial for today. Please do let us know if this helps you in your examinations. Uh, we really thank you for choosing Magnet Axiom as your forensic tool of choice, and we'll strive to continue not only bringing brand new artifacts to you like Wicker on iOS, but also improving upon the ones that already exist. This is Mike Williamson signing off.